Apple has just unveiled the iPhone 15s yesterday, and they actually come with a lot of changes, some of which uh, they didn't really mention at the event. So here's not 5, not 10, but 23 interesting things that you should definitely know about the iPhone 15 if you plan on getting one. And I should be clear, this video is just about the 15, not the 15 Pros. There's even more things to mention about the 15 Pros, uh, so that would be in a separate video. So, iPhone 15, 23 major changes right after our sponsor, Casetify. Casetify and their iPhone 15 series case collection offers some personalized choices while also providing military-grade protection. Check out Casetify by using the link below as well as later in the video. Number one, frosted glass. Yes, for the first time ever in a non-pro model, we have a frosted glass back, which looks amazing. On top of this, Apple is using a new process for coloring the glass by infusing the color directly into the glass instead of uh, painting it on the bottom. So it should look quite uh, quite nice in person. Number two, we also get some new pastel colors. And yes, these colors are very pastel, they're very washed out, although some of them look really nice. The black one is by far my favorite, especially since this is the first matte black iPhone ever since the iPhone 7. And that's because we get both matte black sides and a matte black frosted glass back, which just looks amazing. Uh, the green color looks awesome too, uh, the pink looks pretty good too, uh, the yellow is okay, and the blue is very muted. It almost looks like white, probably because we don't actually get a white this year. Then if you're wondering why we don't have a product red version anymore, like we've had in all the recent years, well, that's likely because Apple will be introducing it in March as the new color. This is what they've been doing for the past few years as well, adding some new colors in March. And Apple hasn't really talked about it that much, but the frame is more rounded towards the edges now, like we've seen leaks which does make it more comfortable to hold in the hand. Interesting enough, the leather cases are entirely gone and Apple is using a new material called fine woven. Essentially, uh, this is more like a synthetic fiber. It's more eco-friendly and uh, it kind of looks like Apple's cleaning cloth material. So it seems to be very soft, but of course we'll confirm this once we get the cases in store or in the studio next week. And something that I'm very glad to see is Apple increasing the display brightness on the standard models. So now the standard models can go as bright as the pros up to 2000 nits in direct sunlight from 800 like we had before. So this is a huge, huge increase. Which means that really, aside from the ProMotion technology, so the 120 Hertz, the displays between the standard models and the pros are now essentially identical. And just as rumored, we also get the same dynamic island as the iPhone 14 Pros from last year, which means that more and more apps will support it and uh, it will uh, be used a lot more than it is currently now. Then number eight, we get the Apple A16 chip, which which is actually the chip that Apple launched last year. So yes, the standard models do not get the latest chip uh, like we used to in the past, but uh, they get the Pro chip from the year before. Now, if you're getting an iPhone 15, um, you also need a case to protect it. And that's where our sponsor, Casetify, comes in. So what I like the most about Casetify and why I'd recommend them is that they offer a ton of protection options that you can customize and make them your own. I've picked this B design as it's the symbol of Manchester where we're based. Casetify's new iPhone 15 case series offers a variety of options from 4X up to 10X military grade drop protection. And their new Ultra Bonds case has been designed for complete protection while still being comfortable and fully customizable too. With six layers of shielding provided by the integrated lens cover, hard shell back plates, X-shaped EcoShock lining, Ultra Bounce corners, hard shell bumper, and inner EcoShock lining, the Ultra Bounce is one of the most protective cases on the market. And for minimalists, Casetify also offers impact and bounce cases, so you can decide on the style and protection that you need. Get 15% off at casetify.com slash zone of tech. Now, the standard models do get a brand new 48 megapixel camera, but Apple hasn't actually mentioned this at the event. Uh, this is not the same camera as the 14 Pros from last year or the 15 Pros from this year, despite having the same megapixel count. This is actually a smaller 48 megapixel sensor. If you take a look at the pixel sizes when binned, uh, the iPhone 14 Pros and 15 Pros have 2.44 microns uh, compared to 2 microns on the iPhone 15s. The good news, however, is that the new default resolution is now 24 megapixels as opposed to 12 
like we had before. Even on the 14 Pro, it was also 12 despite having a 48 megapixel sensor and you could only do 48 megapixels uh, in RAW, but now you can do 24 as well. Which means that on the iPhone 15, the images that you take will be twice as sharp uh, which is awesome, and this is the default now, 24 megapixels. But the best news for me by far is that we also get Smart HDR5. So Smart HDR4, that was Apple's uh, HDR processing engine, uh, was found on the iPhone 13 and 14. And it wasn't great, like we've seen from our previous camera comparisons, uh, those iPhones had blown out highlights constantly. And based on the images that we've seen, it seems like Smart HDR5 finally fixes those issues. Of course, we'll do our own camera comparisons, so definitely subscribe and stay tuned for those, and we'll confirm if this issue has been fixed or not. But I do find it out how the iPhone 14 Pros, despite having the exact same chip and also a very similar main camera, and that it's actually better, does not get Smart HDR5 through a software update. Instead, it sticks with Smart HDR4. Just like the 14 Pros, the standard models also get that 2x sensor crop zoom. So essentially a 2x lossless zoom, kind of like having a third lens in that case, which is awesome. And yeah, we now have a zoom, optical zoom, so to say, on the standard models too. And then we also get a big upgrade when it comes to portrait mode photos. So now, whenever you take up regular photos, uh, it will detect if that photo can be taken in a portrait mode and automatically switch to portrait mode. So essentially, it's just automatic now. You don't have to manually switch it. Not only that, but you can also change the focus on the subject after you've already taken the shot. And on top of that, you can also use that 2x sensor crop to take your uh, portrait mode shots, whereas before you could only use the main lens. Uh, but yeah, now we have another option. Now, even though the cameras do seem to be quite similar to the 14 Pros and 15 Pros, uh, they're actually not, especially the ultrawide. The ultrawide on the Pro models has uh, the ability to shoot macro photos, and it is also superior in other ways like low lights, um, and you, you just don't have this on the standard model, so do keep that in mind. And we also lack ProRes and Pro Raw. Uh, these are also exclusive to the Pro models, so if you need the extra editing flexibility, Pro Raw, especially for photos, would indeed make a pretty substantial difference. Something that is not exclusive to the Pro models is USB-C, which we finally get, but on the standard models, this is restricted to USB 2.0 speeds of just 480 megabits per second. These are the same speeds as before, and in fact, this is the slowest USB-C connector that you can have on any phone right now. There's no slower speeds than uh, USB 2.0. Oh, and fun fact, the only reason why Apple actually switched to USB Type-C this year is because they were forced by the EU to do so. But something cool about USB-C is that now you can connect to USB-C displays directly without the need of an adapter. And you can also charge your Apple Watch and your AirPods Pro directly from the USB-C cable uh, from the iPhone, which is pretty cool. Um, now, it doesn't work wirelessly, sadly, so there's still no reverse wireless of charging despite us having the tech inside the iPhones to do that with uh, the MagSafe battery pack, but yeah, there's no way of actually charging those wirelessly like you can on other phones like Samsung phones. Uh, 19, the cable is braided, uh, which is awesome, but sadly it is not color matched like it was initially leaked. We also get the brand new U2 chip, and no, this doesn't have anything to do with uh, U2, which Apple kind of pre-installed a few years ago. So if you have an Apple Watch Series 9 and an iPhone 15 or 15 Pro, you can located just like an AirTag with precision finding, and you also get three times the range compared to uh, the U1 chip. But the weird thing is that we didn't really get the precision finding before with the U1 chip at all uh, on an Apple Watch and an iPhone, despite already getting this functionality with the AirTag, which also comes with the U1 chip. So I do find that quite weird. We also get a brand new feature called Roadside SOS, which will also work with the 14 Pros, by the way, and the 14s. Uh, essentially, when you don't have any cellular signal and your car broke down in the middle of nowhere, uh, you can uh, now request um, some roadside help uh, to pick up your car and tow it, for example, if you have any issues, whereas before you would have to literally call uh, 911 for that. Now, there are some charging limitations, so we still get the exact same charging speeds, though up to 50% in 30 minutes, uh, despite getting USB-C, so we don't really get any faster charging speeds, same applies to the Pro models. Um, and the wireless charging is still the same, 7.5 watts using non-MagSafe chargers, so despite that having, uh, having been leaked, uh, we don't actually get any faster wireless charging speeds. Uh, we also don't get Wi-Fi 6E, uh, only the Pro models get Wi-Fi 6E this year, uh, which offers two times the Wi-Fi speeds compared to Wi-Fi 6, up to 2.4 gigabits per second from 1.2 if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router. But yeah, I do find it a bit of a shame that the iPhone 15 models stick to Wi-Fi 6. And if you're planning on getting an iPhone 15, I would honestly suggest getting an iPhone 14 Pro refurbished instead, 
uh, which you can probably get for about the same price. Apple will be selling one too in a few months. And the thing is, you also get a lot more extra features. You get 120Hz, which is literally the biggest feature on the Pro models. You get the always on display, you get a 3x little photo module. Uh, you get uh, the macro mode, the better ultra wide, pro res, pro raw, the stainless steel frame if you like that, and so on. And the only downside is that you get lightning instead of USB C, but I think uh, that trade off is worth it in favor of all the advantages and the extra features that you get. Uh, so, yeah, feel free to subscribe for the video on the pro models, and we have a lot more iPhone content coming soon as well. I'm Daniel, this is North Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, North Tech, signing out. Cheers.